Hi biologists, Miss Ray here. So we're going to do our last lecture video, right? That's crazy, it's our last one. So for our last video, we're gonna be talking about selection. Now we've been talking about selection prior to this. You had a whole entire lesson on just natural selection and that's where nature is selecting the traits. But there are other times when it's not specifically nature or those um, abiotic factors that are selecting, but instead we will learn about how there is sexual selection and there's actually artificial selection too. We also are gonna learn about what do we call uh, when the male and female of a species look different. Um, and we call that sexual dimorphism. So there's a lot that we're going to cover. Uh, this is going to be very much image heavy. So pay attention to the videos as you're taking notes and write down some examples that you see so that it can again resonate and stay in your mind. So have your packets ready. Let's go on and get started. Unit six, lesson four, selection. So we've been talking about the intro to evolution. We then talked about the evidence to support evolution. And then we talked about natural selection. And we've learned that natural selection, you have these environmental conditions that determine which organisms are fit and adapted to an environment. And that there are these abiotic and biotic resources acting as selection criteria. Competition and also predation also drive um, these types of selections. How does selection breed change? So selection over a long period of time leads to speciation. And this is an event that gives rise to a new species. But let's define species. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce with other members of a population to produce offspring that are both viable and fertile. We do see um, breeding between two different species, um, but they don't yield anything or they don't yield anything that could then give rise to something new. Um, offspring need to be viable. Now let's add to our notes. Viable means living, able to live, means life means we have to have an offspring that is able to live and live a good life, a healthy life with not any health complications. And fertile means that the offspring needs to be able to then grow to adulthood, reproduce, and also produce offspring. So let's take a look at some of our pictures. So we have all these different species of beetles. Some of them are very similar in some of their apps attributes and some of them are extremely different. Let's look at these, but they're all different species. They can't intermingle. Let's look at, look at the pictures of the dogs. These dogs are different looking, but they're still the same species because they can reproduce with each other and produce viable and fertile offspring. Now there are differences within a species. When the males and females of the same species have noticeable differences in physical appearances between sexes, this is called sexual dimorphism. Let's break down that word. Di meaning two, morph meaning structures or changes or able to change. So we're pretty much saying that there are two different versions of uh, appearance in a, in, in a species or sex of the species. If you look at this male and female angler fish, look at the size difference. The female is huge in comparison to the male. Now, why could this be helpful? There's a couple different things. It can be helpful with distracting predators away from the female in the nest. This we usually see sometimes when we have more neutral colors for the female and much brighter colors for the male. It also can be helpful in sexual competition. And um, we'll learn more about what kinds of sexual competition go on, but either by attracting mates or even competing with the same sex. Now, how do a new species arise? So we know that speciation is the event that ri uh, gives a rise to a new species. Eventually, a population of species will become so genetically or physically different from the other populations that it may become either unrecognizable, mate calls, the, the organism doesn't recognize, um, physical attributes, it looks too different, um, et cetera, um, or it's impossible to breed. They can't produce viable or fertile offspring. 
Now we have some examples, for example, ligers, that's tigers and lions breeding together. We only see these in zoos and if any offsprings are produced, they're usually very weak in constitution and they need a lot of help. Um, so we can't really say that they're viable and we don't really see that they're fertile either because for them to breed again, they'd have to breed with either a tiger or a lion and only the female ligers are able to do that. So not a new species. Frog calls. Um, different species have different calls and the species is not going to recognize another frog call. Um, it won't recognize that, oh, oh, you're making that call that I recognize. Oh, I can mate with you. So they sort of just ignore it. Um, mules, um, that's a male donkey and a female horse. Most offspring are infertile. And again, you can't breed a mule and a mule together. They, they don't produce anything. Um, new species being discovered. Like, why do we find new species? It's not that they don't, they just pop into existence, but it's usually because we're exploring new areas. Um, we find new species because um, they're physically similar to a known species, but too different overall. In other words, we get a closer look at a species that we've been misidentifying. And technology, uh, being able to run DNA tests and actually say, oh, wait, wait, hold up. This is actually a new species. So there are other types of selection. So far, we've talked about how nature selects via natural selection, but there are also other types of selection that serve as a mechanism for evolution. So we're going to talk about sexual selection. This is a mode of natural selection when one biological sex of a species chooses another to mate with and competes with others of the same sex to mate with the opposite sex. And there's intrasexual selection and intersexual selection. And we're going to go over more of those, but just take a look at the pictures. These are all the different types of, again, selection that you can have with sexual selection. Now, intra, that's with an R and A. This is competition directly with others for mate. It's usually violent, can sometimes lead to death. The winner usually gets the mate because the others are scared, uh, have been dominated, or are too hurt to be able to continue this is usually it usually involves males and it's the male to male competition and this is one of the reasons why sometimes we see a lot more weapons whether that's antlers or um larger appearance or, or whatnot that sometimes we see with that sexual dimorphism now intersexual selection this is choosing and selection made by appearance call dance and this is usually where we, we see a lot of this in birds, but also in other organisms too. But this is usually a female choice um, uh, or a mate choice is what we usually say. And it's not usually violent. If one, if for example, the female's like, no, nah, I'm not interested. She flies away and the male's like, okay, I'll try another male. I'll try another female. Um, so again, that's usually nonviolent and uh, intra is usually violent and deals with males. So you'll need to keep those two separated. There is a third type of selection that we're going. So we've talked about natural selection. We've talked about sexual selection, but there is artificial selection. And we've actually already talked about this when we talked about genetically modified organisms or GMOs. So nature provides the variation. Nature provides the variation on the different changes, but humans select the variations that are useful. Um, they do selective breeding. So they're like, hmm, I really want that. I really want my tomatoes to look like that. Or in the picture that you see of all those different types of tomatoes, what they're trying to do is, is try to find tomatoes that last longer, um, that are preserved longer. But that means that they can stay in the grocery store longer before they go bad. Um, you have this image where someone's taken wild mustard and they've created all of these different vegetables that we eat like kohlrabi, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, have all come from this wild mustard plant and they've had their traits modified. We do selective dog breeding. Um, we are like, oh, I like this. I'm going to, I'm going to make a cockapoo, which a cocker spaniel and a poodle together. Um, We've also seen over time, as you can see in the, in the cows, the pictures of the cows, that we tend to breed cows that are more muscular over time. We like those traits and we breed other muscular cows because muscles are actually the part of the meat 
that or the part of the animal that we eat that's the meat so more muscles means more food so again some examples farmer choosing his best to breed future generations um, gmos they're all examples of artificial selection and we're almost finished you have been given a link um, through qr code or you can just search our planet birds of paradise exclusive clip netflix um, utilizing your notes and questions you'll watch the video and answer the Q&A. All right. Have a great day.